Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this morning coming to you from Studio B, which means we have a special guest with us in the studio. But first, let's take care of our weather. We're looking at today, a high of 84, a low 76, and the water temperature did go up one degree, just like we said yesterday, with that wind coming in out of southeast. It's going up one degree to 78.8. Take a look at our river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. The Apalachicola Blunt Sound is at a 7.7 .7 and pretty level all the way across. And the Choctatchee at Careville is close to it at a 7.3. Got a little bit of a drop, but with the rain coming in, we're going to be going back up probably for the weekend, so be prepared for that. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Long, and like we said all week long, we're in deep tide, not much movement. But now, the thing to keep in mind today, of course, is going to be our marine forecast. And right now they have it coming out of southeast at about 16. So not a good day to be on the water. So it'd be a good day to be, uh, be on the creek somewhere, but not on the, any kind of open water. So be aware of that. I know y'all are you know, watching the storm and everything. So just be prepared and, and we'll get through this like we have everything else <laughs> the last few years here in the Florida Panhandle. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and look who's with us this morning, <laughs> Daniel Cole. Welcome good to the morning. show. Yep, good morning. Nice Listen, to be here. we've been missing you. I've been missing me too. <laughs> we've been awful busy. Well, I know, and you say some people have been asking, where have you been on the show? Yes, I figured I better show up. They probably forgot how ugly I am. Well, so. it's good that they, they, they missed you. It's good to be missed. <laughs> it is good to be missed. I'm, I'm well, happy to be here. Well, what do you, what do you think about Studio B? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, uh, I was just thinking, you know, it reminds me of the old Tom Hips and the Daybusters day. <laughs> we, we, were we were just need Louie in the corner yeah, with the Louis organ the there. The organ and, uh, <laughs> that was some good television back in the days like that. And we don't, it was. We've got to get Jeff to play an organ over there, I guess. So we, I we guess so. It. So uh, anyway, uh, what have you been up to? Well, we've been very busy. Uh, since Hurricane Michael, a lot of the insurance companies uh, have pulled out their support. And so the underwriters uh, have been scrambling to cover boats. It's been a been a nasty affair. Really, and I did not know that. So. Several of our, even our local captains, they just found out you got two weeks to get insurance. And as you know, especially if you have a financed vessel, it has to be covered. Right. Or they'll like, put a like a home finance. A, yeah, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll 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 force place you with a really high coverage. Your whoever finds it. So anyway, I will say this: our guys. I know I've talked to Captain Ray Whitfield. I've talked to uh, several others. Uh, They've had a very big year this year, bigger than they expected coming off such a poor year last year. So I'm yes. really happy to see that. Uh, and uh, now, what do you attribute that to having such a great year? Just well, I think last year, uh, you know, was still really being affected from Michael. You know, mm -hmm. everybody, nobody had a boat to go on. They were all mm -hmm. tore up, and then uh, so that destroyed the tourist season. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think our tourists were ready to come down and support our community and. Uh, they know we've got the best captains in the world right here, doing mm -hmm. the best charter job in the world. And so as soon as they got the first opportunity, they're here. And I've seen some great catches. Yeah. Oh, me too. I, me too. Uh, I, I saw some, I will show some pictures tomorrow, some really fine red snapper that have been caught. But it's, yep. uh, now, are the, the insurance company, that's probably just a national decision. There's nothing on our. Yeah, no, it, I mean, that's what happens when people make yeah. a living taking money from you. <laughs> hoping not to never pay out <laughs> and, and saying that now let me qualify that because it's not the local business people All right yeah, it's not really it's not it's not our sales brokers and people who are here who sell insurance locally mm -hmm. it's the underwriters and most of them are on the international scale like lloyd's of london ones like that that has several subsidiary companies and then they pull out and they say we're not writing any more insurance so yeah and they have these little they have these little figures they got to go by and then uh who knows? Bean counters. <laughs> got more, <laughs> got more beans. Me. <laughs> more beans over here and over here. I, I know. I know how. I know the work. So yep. anyway, so it's working out okay with it. I think most of them are getting covered. We, we've been working, and anybody out there, you know, if you're having trouble getting coverage, uh, we've even found some that had some really incredible problems because of uh, the, uh, the the surveyors they got. They got the wrong surveyor. The surveyor uh, undervalued their vessel and and caused several oh. of them to not get the coverage they needed. Oh, my goodness. And it wasn't it wasn't correct how they rated yeah. the boat. So, you know, with our 
our accreditations, we went back in and I've, I've helped a lot of people resurvey, redo, you know, show the stuff that was missed so that they were able to get covered. If anybody needs that help, please contact me. I'll be happy to help hey, you. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be on the cover. No, because, you know, this shows us we're out of hurricane season, basically, and here we've got another hurricane. <laughs> so, yeah. Somebody said they wanted to uh, cancel their subscription to the Hurricane of Months Club. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's good. We, we want to do that. <laughs> I saw, I saw my, uh, last night a good post that said, uh, we're. Uh, I basically am living my life in the cone of uncertainty. Yeah, in the cone that of cone uncertainty. Yeah. Up That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, we're going we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So here's one of our favorite advertisers, Daniel Cole, and he's one of been a big sponsor and outdoorsman in his own right. Grew up in Apalachicola. Anybody grows up in Apalachicola, you got to be an outdoorsman. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you. So, uh, and you love to hunt fish. Yep, absolutely. I, I know uh, we're going to talk about hunting a little bit later because the last couple of shows we've had a lot of hunting stuff on here. So, but uh, we're talking about your dog. We, we're in Studio B, so we sort of open to the. But you got a dog. Your dog's <laughs> out in the truck. I tried yeah, to, I've got her out in the truck. She's. I, I tried to. I tried to get him, get a dog, and bring him on the show in honor of Jim Wilson to bring his dog on the show. But uh, it's a puppy, right? It's a little pup, doesn't have all the shots yet. I will bring her. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've been wanting for a while. A lot of people don't know I used to do a lot of canine training. I was a canine handler. Okay, and I didn't know fact, that. Yeah, and in fact, when I worked overseas, I, I did that even commercially and okay. uh, would go to corporations and set up not only training facilities, but actually train trainers to handle them once I left. No so, kidding. Yeah, I used to do that uh, when I was younger. So, uh, so you, had you had wore many hats. Very many. Oh, good. I've. Uh, I've, I've wanted one for a while. It took a little while to get around to it, but uh, I found a company in uh, Alabama that uh, specializes in uh, basically uh, there's there's straight Eastern Germany uh, bloodlines, which we know Eastern Germany doesn't exist anymore. East Germany doesn't. Right. It's reunified. So those bloodlines are some of the oldest, and they are no longer duplicable. Oh. So uh, that's not why I got her, but. That that, well, that's an interesting, that was a plus thing. But, that's uh, the original German Shepherd line, or, uh, very much so, and, and not some of these American, you know, where they well, yeah. interbred or cut them down. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are they use very stringent regulations right. on that. So anyway, I got her. I will bring her on. Okay. Uh, and and uh, at some point in time, but now how old, how old is she now? She just turned ten weeks. All right. Yeah, she'd probably be waiting her <clears throat> table or something. We probably don't want her on her table. Yeah, but get her trained. <laughs> she'd be all over. <laughs> but anyway, well, you know. So anyway, training dogs and all, and you love dogs, and you know, being a boat person, you take dogs on the boat. Take so, her with you. Well, you and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, we take it for granted that a dog can swim and it's going to swim, and uh, you know, many breeds can, some breeds can't, but you know. Well, we always think about taking our kids, you know, we're going to have our, our life vests and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It, it's really important to think about your pets as well because there are certain breeds, they fall off the boat just because of their muscle density and, and bone structure. Mm -hmm. They go straight to the bottom. And so, uh, you know, it doesn't cost very much. And uh, to have a good life preserver for your dog, I mean, that's just a smart thing to do. That, that is interesting because, like I said, most people take it for granted. Uh, and sometimes they're going to, if they have a little accident on the boat, they're going to be knocked out or something. You just never know. There was uh, recently, it was found a boat had sunk, and they found a German shepherd who had been treading water for, I believe, four days, they said. Oh, my goodness. And they rescued her. Wow. But that's not the case. Usually, yeah. the dog it goes, it goes. So, you know, he was very lucky. But yeah. had that dog had a, a vest on, or all the ones who have perished had had vests on, it ups their chances so much because we don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. There's so many people out there that are irresponsible that cause wrecks, and uh. you can always have a heart attack. You always have something happen. Mm -hmm. It's just unexpected. So it's just smart practice. You know, we just look, there's so many great dog stories about how they've stood by that when something happens with their owner or something. It could be up in the mountains or out on the water. Yep. Boy, that dog's been there with them, yep. and, uh, and and they'll find the dog and. It's just, uh, just wonderful, wonderful experiences. Well, here, you know, especially in the in in the South, you know, dogs are part of our culture. Yes, they are. I mean, I can imagine up north, you know, they have smaller dogs, a lot of them, where they live in a lot of apartment mm -hmm. complexes. But here, 
a kid, that's the first thing you want to see. He gets up, he gets a certain age, he gets his mm -hmm. first gun, he gets his first dog, and oh, yeah. the two are inseparable. And, and it becomes know. part of the family. And, and, and it's, they it, are part, yeah. And when you're losing, inevitably, you know, you're going to lose, you know, they're going to, most of them will die of old age. And boy, that's like some family member going, it, it really is. So it is part of our culture. So, and, and so anyway, I just wanted to mention that. They didn't want to labor it, but, yeah, you know, yeah. I always think about your furry pets. When you take them on the boat, have a good life vest for them. Mm -hmm. They may not like it. It may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it's just like us having to wear a seat belt or mm -hmm. us wearing a life vest. It, in the end, the end, the instant you may need it, you don't have time to put it on. So well, that, to have it. You know, they were talking about. Uh, I saw <clears> some <throat> some good writing the other day on on seat belts and, and comparing them to life jackets. For them, both of them to work, you got to have them on. That's and right. Because when you see a wreck coming, oh, let me put my seat belt on. You just ain't got time to do it. <laughs> no or time for that. Oh, you falling off the boat and no grab my jacket. You just got. We got to get in the habit and. Uh, and I was with a friend the other day who did not have a seatbelt. Most of the people I'm all, you know, everybody has a seatbelt. This guy had unhooked his when he got his truck out of the factory. I said, you're not going to put your seatbelt on? He said, no. I said, well, I said, uh, most people wear them now. <laughs> he said, I, 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 this, this is, I said, this is 2020 now. We need to put That's a seatbelt. Right. And now I've got a habit. It was hard. I tell you, it was hard for me to get in the habit of wearing my life jacket on a regular basis. Uh, I just, so many of us grew up without them and just jump in the boat and take off. But I, I've gone a lot better with, with a kill switch and life jacket. Well, especially because you're probably like me, you probably go by yourself a lot. Yeah. And I'll tell you, yeah. it's hard to swim down a boat if you fall off and it's still moving away from you. <laughs> that yeah. kill switch is invaluable. Yeah. And I guess you, I guess you've seen over the years, you've seen that, those kind of accidents and those kind of situations where the kill switch to save people. Absolutely, and, yeah. and I've, I've also seen them where, uh, I think even recently we've, we've had some where, uh, because they weren't wearing it, you know, they were ran over and got yeah. out of the prop and had died. Yeah. So uh, several cases of that. So, uh, and, and people sometimes take risks. Do you remember uh, old Herbert Marshall used to be sheriff over in Franklin County? Yes, Sheriff Marshall. Yep, well he, uh, yeah. He, uh, I know that's what happened to him. They were over on St. George Island. The boat got stuck. They tried to push off. It, he didn't, they didn't take the boat out of gear. They were trying to push it, and he slipped and fell on the prop, and it cut his leg, and he, he bled and to he death. he bled right. out. I remember that, yeah. That's and years ago. Accidents can happen in the yeah. weirdest way. It's, and, uh, speaking of St. Vincent, uh, did you used to go there growing up and all? Or just, you, you know... <laughs> That is just a, the I, coolest I, place. I, I loved it, but you know, my, my, my dad did not hunt or fish. Okay. He didn't care anything about it. Well, yeah. He was a tugboat captain. That was his boating, and he didn't do well, nothing. That's right boating, there in your backyard. All I mean, my he, friends did, you yeah. know, and they loved it. I only went one time. Yeah. And it was on a, a, a school, uh, it was on a school uh, field trip. Field we trip. And I got in trouble for that, so they're probably better. <laughs> 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 but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, me and some friends, we we slipped us some uh, alcohol over there on the school bus and took it over. Yeah. And well, maybe you won't get it suspended now, but it, we it, won't it, now. Yeah. yeah, but I would love to go. You know, I've always heard of the hog hunts and the black powder hunts and yeah. all, and I would love to go do that sometime. I've got a really good friend. Uh, uh, I know he grew up doing that all the time, and he lives here now. And uh, yeah, you know, it is real neat. They, they, I've been on a hog hunt. But they interesting enough. Uh, the hog hunt, they let so many people on it, it was a bad experience as far as it getting crowded. So what they ended up doing, uh, they, they killed a lot of hogs that weekend, but what they ended up doing was going ahead and just bringing in trappers. So they trapped all the hogs and got them off the island because you know how they can just take over. Oh, yeah, they'll tear and, uh, stuff up. And they, they were introduced just accidentally, they swam across there to it from the right. lower end of the coast. So anyway, the hog hunts were gone, but the... Uh, they still having the other hunts, the primitive hunts, about three times a year. But Sam Bardeer and all Sam that. Sam Bardeer, yeah. The population is still pretty steady. I'll have to go. You know, growing up yeah. in Appalachia, I, I didn't get to see a lot of that. Oh. I've still never been to Dog Island. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to fly into there just about it. <laughs> Take a boat or something. Yeah. The boat, yeah. we got friends down in, uh, we get a lot of good reports down in Caribbean from uh, Sea Quarters Marina. And they, a lot of, we, we'll go out of Sea Quarters and fish the backside of Dog Island. And then that oh. pad, the cut between St. George Island and Dog Island, that's a treacherous cut. You've been there. Yeah, and I have. That, that, that's a, I've ran boats through there. I'm just saying yeah. I haven't been to visit the island, but I've, I've right. boated all around it. I just that, that, that cut is really one of the most shark-infested ones around. I, yep. But there's good fish in there. Excellent fish. And right now, I heard from a good friend that the whiting are moving in. 
yeah. and, and doing really well over there right now. So uh, he gave time. me a couple secret spots I'm going to go try, which uh, they uh, we're, always we're say gonna do. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk about his secret spots, then we're going to come back. <laughs> we'll come back after the break. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, welcome back, folks. Here with Daniel Cole, talking about all kind of cool things. But let's take a look at first of our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our times today from 9:34 to 11:34, and this evening from 9:54 to 11:54. We're going to quickly get back to a quick uh, dog story. He's telling Jeff during the break and all. Tell us about a real incident about. We're talking about how smart these dogs are. So tell us. This is a great story. Well. Uh, at, at 10 weeks, you know, German Shepherds, of course, they're inherently intelligent. But at 10 weeks, uh, we were out. I was walking in the early dawn light uh, a couple days ago. And someone, as people will do, threw trash out the car and a uh, black bag blew over into the yard. Well, it had the appearance and silhouette of kind of like looking like a snake. Yeah. So, but at 10 weeks, and when I walked up, I didn't really pay any attention to it. But the puppy alerted on it, started barking at it, got against my leg and started pushing and then just sat down and alerted on it, which she's not trained to do. She's only that's, 10 that's, weeks. That's just instinct. So it shows you the imprinting of years of good breeding, what they can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason that really touched me was the last all-black shepherd I had, uh, my wife had been working around the pond clearing up. She came back, Shadow kept getting in the way, and Shadow kept tripping her and tripping her and tripping her. And finally she just knocked her over and she heard her yelp, and my wife had almost walked right into a cotton mouth. Oh. And it bit the dog. The dog jumped in the middle and took the bite. Oh, my goodness. And uh, so we took her to the vet. We did everything we could do for them. But uh, you lost her they're or? just so smart, oh, and they, they are so protective of your family. Yeah. That's so great. Uh, that's, I, that's I, great. when I saw that in that puppy, I was yeah. like, wow. It took me right back to yeah. Shadow, you know? That's right. So Good story. Good story. Now, let's go from. Uh, from dogs to boats, okay? Yep. Uh, you know, that's your, how you make a living, boats Do and all. surveys, what, so. What's going on on the boat scene? Well, just like I said earlier, we're doing a lot of insurance surveys, but something I'd like to do, uh, if you if you want to sometime, uh, I've invited Winston to come out. A lot of people, we get a lot of calls. They ask, what goes on with the real survey? What, what do I look for in a surveyor that I know he's really doing what's worth my money to pay for him to do a survey on a boat? Because there's, very, a lot of different levels, and with our accreditation, nobody, even remotely within our area, comes even close. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that to brag, it's just how it is. Uh, we're NAMS Global uh, certified in hull and machinery. We're ABYC certified in marine systems and standards. 30 plus year state certified licensed electrical master. International Association of Marine Arson Investigators and International Association of Marine Fraud Investigators. So we do a lot of legal, we cover a lot of stuff forensically. That's cool. And so uh, what I'd like to do is invite Coach to come out sometime. We'll pick a little boat uh, and have him come shoot a show on site. And that'd we'll be, show you how we go through great. it. That'd be great. We'll go step by step on how you're doing and everything. And, and that'll help, in, help our, our audience yeah. as well see yeah, I understand. how to kind of yeah. look at that. That's a, that's a win-win situation. We're certainly yeah. do that. Uh, so just we'll get together on a schedule. Uh, what about our, the derelict ve ve vessels? Are they about pretty well cleaned up and all? We still got I them. I think a lot of them are. You know, we had some folks uh, here in town that had got all that cleared up before Michael, and then, you know, oh, we no. got a bunch more. There's still a few here and there, but That's I up. think for the most part they are. Okay. And we're going into the fall season. It's the end of the summer and all. So what are people doing with smaller boats and all? What do they need to be doing now, storing the boats and all, and taking care of them? Well, the biggest thing is just, you know, Wash them down really good. Soap and water. Mm -hmm. uh, put some uh, salt away in your uh, water jacket. You know, you can put it in the end of a hose, screw it into your fitting, That's and then let point. it shoot through. Salt away. Wash everything off. Take your cowling off. WD-40, the top end of the, the motor. Uh, if you've got fuel, uh, if you can put it in a barrel or last thing before you get it off uh, the hose, unplug the fuel, let the fuel run out of the engine. If you're going to only store it for a few months, that's fine. Now, if it's going to be real long term, that'll let your filters and uh, they get clogged, and you let your yeah. uh, like your uh, O-rings and, and rubber seals they'll dry yeah. out. So if right. it's going to be a long term storage, don't do that. Okay. Just be ready to purge it and clean it before you get it going. And I think living here on the coast and growing up here around in the Panhandle, you get accustomed to salt. And we, yeah, sometimes we forget, we just sort of get lazy about what salt can corrode, how bad it is. I remember uh, one day last year, I had a boat out and washed it down really good, and 
and it dried off. And I just happened to run my hand down the hole, and it still has salt. Oh yeah. And that's how that's the litmus test is if you get all the salt. So I, so I did it over again finally, but it, it sticks on it, don't it? It does. That's it really on, does. That was on the hole, yep. and I'd already hose it down. So you can imagine what it does on the metal. Well, I'll be honest. I even, when I come back in from fishing, I hose my rods and reels off. I put salt away on them as well. Do you really? That's the life of your rod and reel. Well, good uh, point. One of uh, the show sponsors, Blue Water Outriggers. Yes. They have a great product in a spray bottle, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name right now, but I talked to one of the gentlemen who works there. He showed it to me, and I put it on, and... I've noticed that it has quadrupled the lifespan of my rods and reels okay. versus just hosing them off of fresh water. All right, All right Terry, send me the name of that. Send me a picture of it. We'll send it. Maybe I'll down. bring it on the next show. Okay. We'll good talk deal. about it a little bit. That'd be a good deal. All right, we've got about about two minutes left now. Uh, what's your plans as far as outdoor stuff? You going to got some hunting coming well, up? Well, I fish? just went down and uh, I, I've got a big quail hunt planned, and oh, cool. I love wing shooting. Yes. And uh, I picked up a beautiful new, uh, not new, it's an older one. It's a Browning B27, which, you know, a lot of people like the superpose. It's called the poor man superpose. Well, <laughs> this poor man, it's the finest shotgun I've ever owned. <laughs> oh, so cool. uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Going to be going up to Alabama with some friends uh, out uh, from from over in the West Coast, uh, or not West Coast, but uh, over toward Destin in there. Oh, man, that'd be fun. What and that'd be my first big, uh, first big quail hunt. So oh. I'm excited. I love to wing shoot. Oh, so. it is awesome. It is awesome. And they'll have the dogs working yep. it off for you. Do you know where, where are you going to be? What part of the state? I you don't know? know what time, where, they're, where exactly yeah, they, it's at, they're, but it's a different. private camp. It's yeah. 400 acres. And oh. uh, it, it's so big, his dogs, uh, you know, they run the GPS collars on them. They said it's not uncommon for them to run, you know, 28 miles at a time. Oh, cool. Which that's all zigzagging. Yeah. But, you know, 400 that's, acres doesn't seem like a lot to cover, but. That's a lot of mileage with those dogs. They, they but they love, love it. it don't they love it? They I love it. I, I love to see a working dog. Well, thank you so much. We got to we gotta start wrapping things up, but we appreciate you coming on. And uh, Thank you very much. Next week or two, we'll get out in the field and shoot that uh, video of that survey. Sounds good to me. Yeah, but I don't want to mess up your hunting and fishing. <laughs> oh, we'll be all right. <laughs> okay. Well, we appreciate it. As always, we appreciate your viewership. I always ask you to do something good for your fellow man each and every day. You have a great day. Enjoy the outdoors, and God bless. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.